Okay, so we just found that the point 2, 4, 4 answers uh, the question of minimizing x squared plus y squared plus z squared subject to the two constraints y plus 2z minus 12 equals 0 and x plus y minus 6 equals 0. Now, normally we just take do the problem and be done with it, but um, let's interpret what we found because we can. Now, in general for these problems, it's hard to actually interpret what happened. But the thing is, let's look at the, the two constraints, just, you know, adding the constant on both sides. Uh, what shape is y plus 2z equals 12? What shape is x plus y equals 6? Each of those are planes, right? You have a plane of normal vector 0, 1, 2, and a plane of normal vector 1, 1, 0 um, in three-dimensional space. Now, what happens when one plane intersects another plane? By the way, these planes aren't parallel, right? We, we just mentioned what the normal vectors are. Um, what happens when two non-parallel planes in three-dimensional space intersect each other? What shape do you get? The intersection of two planes ends up being a line, right? So the constraints actually mean that we're only considering points in 3D space that are part of a specific line. And what do we do for the, so only, we only want to look at points on this line that is formed as the intersection of two planes. And on that line, we were trying to minimize x squared plus y squared plus z squared. What does it mean to minimize this? This is the square of the, dis, the distance. I mean, square, like, well, square of the distance between the point x, y, z and the point zero, zero, zero. But remember, minimizing the square of a distance is really the same work as minimizing the distance itself. Right, so it means that the point two comma four comma four um, minimizes the 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 root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Yeah, that's the distance. So here's the funky thing that we actually did. What we really did, if we interpret it geometrically, and normally we don't have the luxury of doing this, but this problem was nice enough because it wasn't too wacky. But what happened is that we found that there is a certain line which is the, formed as the intersection of two planes. And on that line, the closest point to the origin on that line happens to be the point 2 comma 4 comma 4. Ooh. All right. Let's, um, so what we've done um, is take, taken the second day on Lagrange multipliers and kind of worked a little more, right? So the previous day, we just kind of got introduced to this thing. And then here we saw the case like when um, your, your f function has has um, three input variables, and then we even saw to end with uh, three input variables with two constraints instead of one constraint. Now let's just kind of tidy up some things. Uh, not so much for what we've done today, but just kind of some things that you may have noticed, right? You may have noticed that the contents of three math classes, specifically this one, multivariable calculus, and then a second class, uh, linear algebra, and a third class, one on how to write mathematical proof, which is often called a foundations class or a bridges class. These classes tend to have a lot of random connections to each other. These are like what I call lateral connections. It's not like you have to take Calc 3 and linear and proofs in a certain order. Um, people have done things like take all three classes in the same semester or take in linear before calc 3 or take linear after calc 3 or a lot of math miners take um, some of these classes but not all of them they're lateral connections they're not like prerequisites to each other um, if uh, so the thing is I've tried to design this class um, to provide all the details necessary to be successful with calc 3 even if you haven't taken linear algebra or a class on how to write proofs However, at the same time, there are a lot of connections, and it would be a shame to not point them out. Um, so I don't point them out in the sense of anybody getting a, an advantage. Um, so if you haven't taken linear algebra, I don't think I'm saying things that are going to create an advantage for somebody who has taken linear algebra. But there's just so many connections, right? So I, I, I would think about, about it this way, that like when you think of, you know, algebra in like the high school sense and then pre-calc with its trigonometry and calc 1 and calc 2, there's like a, an order. And you, you know, kind of just have to follow that order. And here's the thing, starting about after Calc 2, just about all the math that you can possibly study uh, post Calc 2, there's so many connections um, between everything and everything else. And what would be really awesome would be to try to teach a class where every student has to take all four semesters um, all together that integrates things and you learn everything that you need to when you need to, but that it doesn't work like that. Um, it's just impractical for the fact that there's so many different academic programs. Um, so we have to teach in more compartmentalized courses. And that, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, and I'm not just, I'm not really just trying to rant. I'm just saying that 
Oh, there would be something else that would be ideal, but I've got to work within the structure of semester long courses. I uh, just, you know, I think it's just helpful and important to just know that um, the math that's learned within this class doesn't really live on an island. It, it is really now, it, there's just so many connections between linear and between a class on mathematical proof. It, it was just worth pointing them out a little bit. So if a connection has been mentioned, and um, you've like say a connection to, to the proofs class has been mentioned and you've taken that class or you're maybe currently taking it, try to process that connection. I mean, if you haven't, just consider it a little just neat factoid um, and try to come back to the connection if you take a class like that in the future. Um, essentially the same comment for linear algebra, right? So um, if you, if, you um, if I had mentioned something related to linear, algebra and you're you've taken it or you are currently taking it try to process a connection and if you haven't it's just a little neat factoid but come back to that factoid later if you take linear algebra um here here's the thing there is, i should just comment that um there is so i've mentioned a lot of lateral connections right so like sideways connections but there is something forward like this class is a prerequisite to some other class not that we have at uwl but um, I had mentioned, for instance, a need to trust something about the theory of Lagrange multipliers. I could say a lot about Lagrange multipliers, but the appropriate place to do that is in a future class called optimization theory. It's not a class that we teach regularly here. Um, even if we did, it would require Calc 3 and linear algebra and proofs all as prerequisites. Um, so I just mentioned it because it's kind of related to my research. Uh, people who study this topic of optimization, um, if they don't become academics anyway, they can actually go into industry and, and make a lot of money. Um, by the way, I'll just uh, end the slides by saying, here's a suggested practice problem for Lagrange multipliers. Try maximizing x plus 2y plus 3z, subject to x minus y plus z equals 1, and x squared plus y squared equals 1. So uh, try that problem above on your own. Um, I'd like to try to steer the end of uh, class on an even bigger conceptual matter. So try to go back through class notes and book examples for uh, this section and the previous. Um, we, we saw two optimization methods that have really different procedures. Okay, so this section versus the last section of the book, right? Stare at the questions, not the answers for a moment, and try to look for patterns before pro providing your own answer to this interactive question. What do you notice about optimization problems which use the SDT method versus the problems that use the new method, the Lagrange multiplier method. There are lots of things. There are multiple clues for you to look at. So this question is really open-ended. Just It's just really a, what do you notice? Um, this, this is really um, meant to be an active process where it leads to uh, your own thoughts so that when you eventually get a question that says maximize or minimize, you can think about whether the SDT method should apply or the Lagrange multiplier method should apply.